Hey guys, welcome back to Nurse Janks. This is going to be part two of a video series that we're doing about EKGs of how to read EKGs like a boss. This is going to be part two, like I said, it's called miscellaneous EKG elements that we're going to be going over. If you guys have not seen part one, I suggest you look at that first. It's going to be going over all of the rhythms. Like I said, these are going to be things that are going to be inside of rhythms. So they're not rhythms in and of themselves. These are things you will see in any rhythm pretty much. So like PACs, for example, you could see this in a junctional rhythm. You could see this in sinus rhythms. You can see this pretty much anywhere. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started. Like I said, watch part one first. Meet me back here. All right, let's get started. So PACs are P waves that are essentially occurring too early, okay? They're gonna stick out because they're gonna decrease your R to R interval substantially. So in this example down here, for example, let's look at this. So we see these R to Rs are roughly the same. I know they're a little bit different, but they're not that different, okay? All of a sudden we have this complex, which is pretty much back to back to the other one. And if we look a little bit closer, we're gonna see something strange. So the PAC is right here. It's this little guy right here. Now the P wave does not have to look different like this one does in this example here. See how all the other P waves look kind of like normal humps and this one's kind of like this tall peaked one. It doesn't have to look different. The fact that makes it a PAC is because it's occurring really close to your T wave, um, abnormally close relative to your other waves, okay? so. In these examples, you have a T and then there's a big pause and then you have your next P wave, okay? Same thing here, same thing here, and so on. This one is the only one where they're basically on top of each other. So the second that the T is done, you have a PAC. Um, and in this case, this is going to be a conducted PAC because what that means is we have a PAC and then we have a QRS complex that follows it, okay? So then there's also something called a non-conducted PAC, in which case we're going to have a PAC that will not be followed by a QRS complex. So for example, in this right here, we have a P wave, QRS, T, P, QRS, T, P, QRS, T, P, and then nothing, right? Basically it resets and all of a sudden it goes back into a normal complex again, okay? But right here, if you guys can see, there is this little wave. I know this might be a little tricky to see, so I'm gonna link this entire article that you guys can go to um, in the description box. So you guys can maybe see this image in a little bit more detail, but basically there's a T wave followed by the little P wave and then there's no QRS that follows it. Um, and it resets itself a little bit down the line here. Now, PACs by themselves are not necessarily something you need to freak out about, okay? These things can be brought on by stress, extra caffeine, anxiety. Sometimes people feel them, sometimes they don't. You know, they could go completely unnoticed, and if you're not looking at their heart rhythm, you're really not gonna know they're, they're having PACs. If you're having them all the time, and especially if they're non-conducted ones, and they're causing these big pauses in the heartbeat, that might make people a little bit more symptomatic, but the occasional PAC like this that just maybe makes you have like a quick beat is not gonna really be something that's gonna throw most people off. Now let's talk about PVC. So these are a lot different. So instead of the atrial contraction that's going prematurely, this is going to be a ventricle contraction that's happening prematurely. These you're gonna feel more often than PAC. So these might feel like your heart's dropping out of your chest, you know, you're losing your breath or something like that. Um, usually these are symptomatic. They don't have to be, but usually. Um, and especially if they're recurring uh, a lot, and it's not just like one random one, you're probably gonna feel something. Okay, so look at this example here. I'll bet you guys don't even have to have me tell you what the PVC is. You're probably gonna see it, or, you know, it just sticks out at you right here. The only thing that's abnormal here, right? The, this giant PVC. Now we know it's a ventricular beat because look how wide this thing is. It's QRS complex is super wide versus these tiny, narrow, normal QRS and we have no P wave. So basically this thing just goes straight into a QRS complex and it's going to be a ventricular one because it's nice and wide. All right, that's how we know that it's a PVC. It's really easy to see PVCs. PACs are a little sneaky sometimes to see. PVCs, pretty obvious. So like I said, there's only one in this one here right now and you guys can see it plain as day. If we go down here to look at some other examples, PVCs can occur in different patterns. They can occur um, as couplets, essentially two back-to-back. -back. They can occur as triplets or three back-to-back. -back. If you guys have four more back-to-back, -back, that's actually considered to run a VTAC. And what it would look like is essentially just all these you know, ventricular beats just back to back to back to back. And of course it can run as long as it wants to. 20 beats of VTAC, for example, four beats of VTAC, um, or a couplet or a triplet, right? So there's lots of different types of ventricular beats. Um, this one right here is an example of something called ventricular bigeminy, whereas we have a normal QRS response followed by a PVC, and it repeats like that. So every other beat is a PVC, and every other beat, you know, is normal. So basically, normal, PVC, normal, PVC, normal, PVC, that's bigeminy because it's every other beat. We can also have something called ventricular trigeminy, where we have every third beat. So we have two normal followed by the PVC. Two normal PVC, two normal PVC, repeating every third beats at PVC. Uh, here's an example of both couplets and triplets in the same strip. 
this looks like maybe they're in junctional rhythm because they have those upside down P waves and these kind of, uh, you know, upside down QRSs. I don't really know if that's just the, the heart leads aren't really on there right or what. But the point is we're seeing couplets, these two together, just PVC by PVC, and then they're triplets right here, one, two, three of them. And of course, like I said, if you had four, this only has three until it resets, um, that would be considered a little run of VTAC and you guys can see plainly why, because if this were just repeating itself, you know, on and on, that it looks identical to VTAC because basically it is. Now let's go ahead and talk about bundle branch blocks, okay? So a bundle branch block is essentially just a QRS response that is more than 12 milliseconds, okay? So a wide one. Right here, for example, we're going to have a very wide QRS. It starts around here, it ends around here. It's like three to four blocks long. Okay, so that's going to be at least 12 milliseconds up to 16, because um, each block is four. So, right here, big, right? So we're gonna have bundle branch block, bundle branch block, bundle branch block. That's all it means, wide QRS response. These are not really considered ventricular in origin because you still have your P waves here, and then you have your QRS response, it's, it's just wide. Okay, so instead of being nice and tight, it's wide. Now, there's two types of bundle branch blocks. There's left and right, okay? The way to differentiate them, you actually have to look at different leads in lead two. For this entire video sequence so far, we've basically been just looking at lead two. So like I said, for this, you're gonna have to look at V1 and V6. You guys can see that on the monitor, or if you guys are doing an EKG, you're gonna get more leads. It's just more views of the heart. So you're gonna have to look in some of these other leads to differentiate. So if you guys are looking at V1, you're going to see an upward spike on your QRS response for a right bundle branch block, and you're gonna see a negative response for the left. So if you guys wanna look at V6, on the other hand, you're gonna see something called bunny ears on a left bundle branch block, but you won't see that on the right. So bunny ears, if you guys know what bunny ears look like, it kind of looks like this right here. And I know it's once again, maybe hard to see. If you guys click on the link, you'll get the picture in better detail. But basically the QRS goes up, then it starts to come down and then it goes back up again before coming down altogether. And it almost has a little notched appearance and it kind of just looks like bunny ears. That's why it's just commonly referred to as bunny ears in the tele world. Um, and that's only going to occur, like I said, in V6, only for a left bundle branch block. So whether or not you guys wanna look at V1 or V6, it's really your choice, or both, you know, that's that's always fine too, but you're gonna see basically a positive looking V1 on the right versus a negative on V1 on the left, or bunny ears on V6 in the left only, okay? Those are how you basically differentiate. But anything with a wide QRS, with a normal, you know, response otherwise, as in you have a P followed by the QRS and a T, that's considered a bundle branch block, okay? It can occur with any rhythm. All right, so that's basically the end of part two here. I know this was much shorter than part one. Thank God for that, right? Because the part one was like 28 minutes long. So the next one we're gonna be going over heart blocks. I'll just preview this for you guys. Basically heart blocks, you have first degree, you have two different types of uh, second degree blocks, and then you have a third degree block. And at that point, we're gonna be basically done with this series here, and then we can move on to our ACLS series, in which case we will be going over basically what happens during the code blue. So we're gonna try to teach you guys some of that stuff in that series after we are done with this one. Thank you guys for tuning into this video. I appreciate it. Uh, a lot of people were basically telling me to finish this series. So you guys have gotten me motivated. Congratulations. Um, I hope this has been helpful. If you guys have questions, please let me know down in the comments. I'll do my best to respond to you guys. Like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care. I'm coming for the throne.